1,579 miles on one charge, 5-minute refuel, $5,678 to upgrade your old Tesla. The Model 2 just made every EV look ancient. But here's what nobody's talking about. Tesla's being suspiciously quiet about this. No flashy reveal, just leaks and whispers. Why? And if aluminum ion batteries were impossible last year, what did they crack that everyone else missed? Here's the real shock. This isn't about selling new cars. It's about retrofitting millions of existing ones. What does that do to the entire auto industry overnight? Let's dive right in. For years, aluminum ion batteries were the punchline in engineering circles. Everyone knew the theory looked good. Higher energy density, faster charging, cheaper materials. But three fatal problems killed it every time. Chemical instability, voltage incompatibility, and integration nightmares. Labs tried for decades. They all failed. So when Tesla filed patents for cross-platform battery integration in 2023, most people shrugged. Another Musk fever dream. But what if the skeptics missed something? What if Tesla wasn't trying to invent a new battery? They were reverse engineering their entire car lineup to accept one. Go back to 2021. Tesla standardized every production line. Fremont, Austin, Shanghai. Same chassis dimensions. Same battery pack mounting points. Same cooling channels. At the time, analysts called it efficient manufacturing. Now it looks like preparation. The CPMI system, cross-platform module interface, isn't just a battery adapter. It's a Trojan horse. Tesla built it to fit the exact dimensions of their current lithium packs. 1.77 meters long, 1.40 meters wide, 567 kilograms. No cutting, no welding, no chassis modification. The aluminum ion module slides into the same slot where your lithium pack sits right now. That 567 kilogram weight? It's actually lighter than most current Tesla battery packs, which means the retrofit improves weight distribution. Your 2022 Model 3 doesn't just get more range, it handles better. But here's the engineering problem that should have made this impossible. Traditional EV inverters are hardwired for lithium chemistry at 3.8 volts per cell. Aluminum ion runs at 20 volts per cell. Swap them without adaptation, and you're essentially plugging a European appliance into an American outlet. Except instead of a blown fuse, you get an $80,000 paperweight. Tesla's solution is a multi-chemical management system that acts as a real-time translator. The software dynamically adjusts voltage conversion, thermal management, and power distribution through OTA updates. Your car learns the new battery's language without you touching a wrench. But here's what's interesting. If this software is so adaptable, why didn't Tesla deploy it earlier? Were they waiting for aluminum ion to mature? Or did they need years of fleet data to make the system bulletproof? The cooling system reveals even more intentional design. Aluminum ion runs hotter than lithium during rapid charging. To handle this, Tesla designed microchannel cooling plates with thermal fluid circulating through channels thinner than a pencil, pulling heat away before cells reach critical temperature. The fluid dumps into a metal heat sink integrated into the battery housing. The twist? This entire cooling system retrofits into the existing thermal management architecture. No new pumps. No new radiators. The car's original cooling loop just accepts it, which suggests Tesla engineered thermal overhead into their vehicles years ago. Why would they do that unless they knew this was coming? Let's break down this price, because on the surface, it seems impossible. A new Tesla Model 3 battery pack replacement costs around $13,000 to $16,000 
for lithium ion. Now, Tesla claims they'll sell you a revolutionary aluminum ion retrofit with triple the range and five minute charging for $5,678. Either Tesla's taking a massive loss or the manufacturing cost of aluminum ion is shockingly low. Here's the likely reality. Aluminum is the third most abundant element in Earth's crust. Lithium requires complex extraction from brine pools or hard rock mining. Cobalt, a key lithium battery component, involves geopolitically messy supply chains. Aluminum? You can source it almost anywhere. Raw material costs for aluminum ion could be 60 to 70 percent lower than lithium. Add in Tesla's vertical integration. They're producing cathode materials in-house now, and that $5,678 price starts making sense. But there's a darker calculation here. Tesla isn't making money on the retrofit itself. They're making money on the ecosystem. You retrofit your old Tesla, you stay in the Tesla network. You need charging, you use Tesla superchargers. You get updates, you stay subscribed to premium connectivity. You tell friends, they buy Teslas. The $5,678 is customer acquisition cost, disguised as an upgrade. It's the same strategy Apple used with the App Store. The hardware is the hook. The recurring revenue is the catch. And here's the part that should worry traditional automakers. If you own a 2021 to 2023 Tesla, why would you ever switch brands? Your old car just became more advanced than anything rolling off a competitor's line in 2026. Now, the five-minute charging promise sounds great until you do the math. A 60-kilowatt-hour battery charging in five minutes requires 720 kilowatts of sustained power delivery. For context, a typical home uses about 1 to 2 kilowatts at any given moment. One car charging would consume the power of 360 to 720 homes simultaneously. Scale that to a busy supercharger station with 12 stalls, and you're talking 8.6 megawatts of instantaneous demand. That's enough to power a small town. No electrical grid on Earth can handle that spike repeatedly throughout the day. So how does Tesla solve this? They don't pull from the grid in real time. They store it. Enter the Megapack, Tesla's utility-scale battery. Each Gen 5 supercharger station will have its own dedicated Megapack that charges slowly overnight when electricity is cheap and demand is low. When you pull up at 2 p.m., you're not drawing from the city's grid. You're drawing from a battery that filled up at 3 a.m. This is the play traditional automakers can't copy. Ford, GM, Volkswagen, they can build EVS, but they can't build the infrastructure. They're dependent on third-party charging networks, which are dependent on grid capacity, which is dependent on utility companies upgrading transformers. Tesla just bypassed all of that. The Texas Gigafactory is already producing 10,000-plus megapacks annually, and each one can support multiple supercharger stations. By the time other manufacturers figure out fast-charging infrastructure, Tesla will have blanketed North America with grid-independent charging points. But this creates an unexpected shift in consumer behavior. Right now, 80% of EV charging happens at home overnight. But if your Tesla can charge in five minutes at a supercharger, why would you bother with a home charger? Why install a $1,200 Level 2 charger in your garage when you can stop for five minutes on your way to work? We went from gas stations to home charging because EVs were slow. Now we might swing back to centralized charging because it's faster than home. And every supercharger visit is metered. Tesla controls the pricing. They can adjust rates based on demand, time of day, location. It's recurring revenue that traditional gas stations never had because fuel pricing is competitive. 
but let's pump the brakes, because if this sounds too good to be true, we need to talk about the risks. First is battery degradation. Lithium ion loses about 2 to 3% capacity per year under normal use. What's the degradation rate for aluminum ion over 5 to 10 years? Tesla hasn't published long term cycle data. The technology might be proven in labs, but real world durability across temperature extremes, humidity, and charge patterns remains unknown. Second is the retrofit warranty. Tesla's current battery warranty covers 8 years or 120,000 miles. Will the aluminum ion retrofit carry the same warranty? If it degrades faster, that $5,678 could turn into a $12,000 mistake in year three. Third is cold weather performance. Lithium ion already suffers in freezing temperatures. Range drops 30 to 40% in winter. Aluminum ion chemistry is less understood in extreme cold. Will Chicago drivers see that 1,579 mile range drop to 900 miles in January? And finally, regulatory approval. Has the aluminum ion battery passed all federal safety tests? Crash testing? Thermal runaway protocols? The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration doesn't move fast. If Tesla's timeline is 2026, they need approvals now. The silence is deafening. So what's really going on here? Either Tesla is sitting on the most significant battery breakthrough in 30 years and being uncharacteristically humble about it, or they're floating trial balloons to gauge market reaction before committing billions to production. The smart money says it's both. Tesla has the technology. The question is whether they can manufacture it at scale, price it profitably, and deploy it without the inevitable growing pains that come with any paradigm shift. Because here's the ultimate truth. If the Model 2 delivers even 70% of what's promised, let's say 1,100 miles of range, 8-minute charging, and a $7,000 retrofit, it's still a category killer. Every other EV becomes obsolete overnight. So why the silence? Why no flashy stage reveal? Because Tesla learned something crucial. The boldest moves don't need fireworks when the results speak for themselves. This isn't about hype. It's about permanently rewriting the rules before competitors even realize the game changed. Remember that uncomfortable question from the beginning? What's the catch? Here it is. There isn't one for Tesla. The catch is for everyone else. Ford, GM, Volkswagen. They just realized they're not competing against a car company. They're competing against an energy ecosystem that took a decade to build, while everyone was focused on quarterly earnings. This is exactly why the aluminum ion breakthrough matters beyond just EVs. We're watching the blueprint for how infrastructure-dependent technology gets deployed at scale. The same playbook works for anything. Autonomous networks, renewable grids, even space-based solar. Control the infrastructure, control the market. And this is just the beginning. By 2027, we'll likely see aluminum ion in energy storage, grid stabilization, maybe even aviation. The question isn't if this technology spreads, it's how fast. So here's what I want to know. If you could retrofit your current car with this battery tomorrow, would you? Or would you wait to see real-world data first? Drop your thoughts below, because this conversation is just getting started. This is Tech Revolution, where we don't just report the news, we decode what it actually means. If you want more breakdowns like this, you know where to find us. The future just accelerated. Let's see who keeps up.